Burn. The Honourable Member for Kootenay, Columbia. Thank you, Madam Speaker. In February, I rose in this House to ask the government to strengthen the legislation regarding Gatineau Park by establishing the park's boundaries in law and enshrining ecological integrity as the top priority for the management of the park. At that time, the Prime Minister indicated that the government would work with the National Capital Commission to do, and I quote, everything we can to protect this beautiful wilderness area for generations to come. Unfortunately, thus far, those efforts have stopped short of the common sense measures I raised. Mr. Speaker, this year marks 80 years since Gatineau Park was established. Gatineau is one of the most diverse regions in Quebec and has enormous ecological value. The park is home to 50 mammal species, 200 species of birds, 50 tree species, and some 1,000 species of vascular plants. The park is also home to 125 species of conservation concern, including the Blanding's turtle and the eastern wolf. 80% of all eastern red cedar trees in Quebec are in Gatineau Park. Mr. Speaker, in addition to its many Madam Speaker, in addition to its many ecological benefits, Gatineau Park also makes a significant economic and social contribution to the national capital region, receiving more than 2.6 million visits per year. And if any members of Parliament haven't yet been to the park, I encourage you to do so. You can even get there by bicycle, I know, because I did that last year. According to a study conducted by the National Capital Commission, the park generated approximately $241.5 million to the local economy from September 2015 to August 2016, including through such things as spending at local restaurants, on sports and recreational equipment and services, and on other shopping related to visiting the park. Madam Speaker, it is clear that Gatineau Park has a special place in the hearts of many residents of our nation's capital region. But despite all of its obvious benefits, the park does not have the same legislative protection as those afforded to our national park system. For nearly 50 years now, the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society has been striving for stronger protection for Gatineau Park. Despite the park's ecological and social importance in this region, there are still no restrictions on development within the park. There are also no set borders for the park, meaning that its future is dependent upon whoever sits on the National Capital Commission board at any given time. While the boundaries of the park have been recognized through NCC policy and an order in council, they can still be amended without the same oversight as an act of parliament would require for a national park. The NCC is reviewing the park's master plan this year, which is great, but there's no reason to wait until the master plan is complete to strengthen the park's legislative protections. These processes can occur in parallel. The government has repeatedly reiterated its commitment to protecting 17% of our land by 2020. Rouge National Urban Park in the GTA has given us an example of what national park conservation in an urban environment can look like. Let us use this opportunity to follow that example and strengthen the legislative protections for Gatineau Park. Madam Speaker, it is worth noting that at one time or another, all parties have made commitments to protect the Gatineau Park. Former NDP MP Nicole Turmel introduced a private member's bill in 2012 that would have established the park's boundaries in law and emphasized ecological protection in the management of the park. The Prime Minister and the Liberal Party voted in favour of Madame Turmel's bill when they were in opposition. And when I raised this issue in February, the Prime Minister described Gatineau Park, and I quote, as a true jewel in our national capital region. He went on to say, we will work to continue to ensure that we are doing everything we can to protect this. Unfortunately, the time is up. I'll see if the Parliamentary Secretary of the Minister of Canadian Heritage is able to respond. I'm sure he will be. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, and I'd uh, like to thank the Honourable Member from uh, Kootenay, Columbia, for, that, uh, for the question and for his interest in the Gatineau Park. Gatineau Park is a stunning natural conservation area located just minutes from the centre of our nation's capital. As the Prime Minister has said, the park's trails, forests and lakes are truly a jewel of the capital region, with its diverse ecosystems and heritage features. Gatineau Park is a prime destination that attracts some 2.6 million visitors each year. 
Since the creation of Gatineau Park, conservation and preservation have been in the forefront. The National Capital Commission works with all stakeholders to ensure the conservation of resources while offering visitors recreational and leisure activities that are eco-responsible. The Gatineau Park Master Plan, prepared by the NCC, establishes a vision of the park as a natural conservation area and secondarily for leisure activities. The Gatineau Park is the conservation park of the capital. All publicly held lands within Gatineau Park are reserved for park purposes. Any public infrastructure development is very carefully considered with the overall goal of enhancing the conservation of the park's ecological integrity and cultural resources. De plus, le CCN. Moreover, the NCC generally, insofar as possible, acquires private property within the periphery of the park in order to ensure conservation of these lands. In 2008, Gatineau Park included 405 private properties, over 600 hectares. Ever since, in its conservation mandate, the NCC has acquired over a third of these lands. Today, the park only has 344 private properties, covering only 386 hectares on conservation have been positive. The 2016-17 report on Gatineau Park ecosystems found that the overall condition of the park is good and that this condition is stable. This is a clear improvement from the 2006 report which found the park's condition to be acceptable. Au sujet de la question de With regard to the limits of Gatineau Park, there are clear and well-defined boundaries. They were officially established by the Board of Directors of the NCC in 1997, and in 2008 they were accepted by the government as the legal foundation of any acquisition of future lands by the park. It is within those long-term boundaries that the organization manages the park. This has achieved since 2005. The NCC is currently renewing the Gatineau Park Master Plan, involving broad consultations with the public, local municipalities, the conservation community, user groups, and other stakeholder groups. The review process provides an opportunity to take the plan forward into the 21st century and preserve the health and integrity of the park for future generations. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Kootenai Columbia. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's easy to go overtime when you're talking about Gatineau Park. So when the Prime Minister responded to my question in February, he said, we will continue to work to ensure that we are doing everything we can to protect this beautiful wilderness area for generations to come. So as we celebrate 80 years of this natural treasure, will the government take the necessary steps to protect it for future generations? And so I'll ask the question again. Will the government amend the National Capital Act to protect the ecological integrity of Gatineau Park and establish its boundaries in law? Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to 